permit me, if you will, to read some words written by someone else about politics in the United States. These words go as follows. Politics is business. That's what's the matter with it. That's what's the matter with everything. Art, literature, religion, journalism, law, medicine, they're all business and all as you see them. This writer went on to say the commercial spirit is the spirit of profit, not patriotism, of credit, not honor, of individual gain, not national prosperity, of trade and dickering, not principle. My business is sacred, says the businessman in his heart. Whatever prospers my business is good. Whatever hinders it is wrong. It must be. Now, those words were written by a man named Lincoln Steffens and published in a book called The Shame of the Cities in 1904. And what was true more than a century ago is true today, and we're learning it more and more as we learn more about our political process in action. Politics is business and business is politics. It may be even more true today than it was in 1904. We have the studies done at Princeton and elsewhere which show that the wishes of the oligarchical class to drive public policy in this country and that the wishes of ordinary citizens rarely become enacted into law unless they happen to coincide with the wishes of that oligarchical class. We have learned that business and politics have become hopelessly intertwined in this country. Now, we see it, of course, most conspicuously in the Republican Party. The Republican Party has always been known as the party of business. Today, it has morphed into something very different. It has morphed into the party of extraordinarily large business. It has morphed into the party of billionaires. It has morphed into the policy, the party not of businesses per se, but of massive corporations that are calling the shots for everyone else and crushing small and medium-sized businesses, as well as individual tradespeople in the process. Now, why does this all matter? It matters for a lot of reasons. It matters, first of all, because we are seeing the corporatization of our political system to an extent that would have been considered unimaginable just a few decades ago. Let's think about the fact that leaders in both parties, especially the Republicans, but so-called centrists and the Democrats as well, want to privatize privatize so many functions of government. We've talked about the privatization of Chicago under Democratic mayors, including Rahm Emanuel. We've talked about the privatization of the governments of Detroit and Flint, Michigan, and other cities under the Republican leadership there. Privatization is a craze. Now, the private sector, we learn, is providing basic services like bottled water to Flint, Michigan, which seems all noble and sweet and all that sort of thing. However, it should be borne in mind that Flint would not have a water problem had not the democratically elected leadership of Flint been replaced by an emergency manager who made the decision to save $100 a day by going off Detroit's water system and drawing water from the Flint River instead. That is politics as business as and business as politics. It is antithetical to what we believe in our democracy. It also brings us to the matter of one Donald J. Trump, who is increasingly looking like he has a good shot to win the Republican nomination for the presidency. I, for one, have maintained that that was possible all along, despite what the pundit class had to say on that topic. Now we know it's true. I personally believe that uh, Donald Trump's move in not attending the Republican debate and in holding his own event was brilliant political theater. It was, in its own way, perversely riveting, and uh, the same reformer Lincoln Steffens, I believe, once said that the American people are willing to tolerate a certain element of corruption in their government as long as it doesn't get too extreme and as long as they are entertained in the process. Now, Donald Trump, for whatever uh, ills may befall him, is in fact, to many people, a very 
entertaining individual. So do not count that man out either for the nomination or if the Democratic nominee is not able to make the case against politics as business as the potential president as well. Let us not forget what Lincoln Steffens said on this matter. The commercial spirit is the spirit of profit, not patriotism, of credit, not honor, of individual gain, not national prosperity. We, meaning the left, meaning the Democrats, if you are a Democrat, and meaning the American people as a whole, forget that at our peril. Let us not do that. Business is business, as Lincoln Steffen says, that is not a political sentiment.